Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover how muscle range of motion influences exercise selection for hypertrophy training. First and foremost, we need to explore exactly what muscle range of motion is. Range of motion in a general sense refers to how much the joint angle changes during an exercise. However, for hypertrophy training, we aren't really concerned with joint angles, we are more concerned with range of motion of the muscle. Muscle range of motion specifically refers to how much a given muscle lengthens and contracts during an exercise. This is specific to each muscle we are trying to train. Different exercises may take the same muscle through different ranges of motion, even if both exercises are performed with what is considered full range. For example, a narrow grip pull-up takes the lats through a greater range of motion than a wide grip pull-up, even if both exercises are performed from a dead hang to the chin above the bar. So how does range of motion influence hypertrophy? In general, we see superior hypertrophy outcomes when training with full range in comparison to partial range. While we don't fully understand why this may be the case, there are some potential mechanisms that may explain this. We will now cover what these are. First is total mechanical work. When training with a larger range of motion, we are increasing the total amount of work that is performed by the muscle. Mechanical work or volume load is calculated by multiplying reps times sets times load times distance traveled in the lift. So if we increase distance traveled by increasing range of motion, we will perform more mechanical work per set. Although this comes with the trade-off that load or reps will be reduced, the net mechanical work will probably still be greater using a larger range of motion. However, we do know that volume load is probably not the best way to quantify volume for hypertrophy training, because we can achieve equal hypertrophy outcomes across a spectrum of different rep ranges and loads. If we were to use higher rep ranges and lighter loads, this would also result in greater mechanical work, but it doesn't mean that hypertrophy outcomes will be greater. So this mechanism doesn't fully explain why larger range of motion training is superior, but it provides some potential reason. Another mechanism that may be at play here is training a muscle at long muscle lengths. It seems that when we perform dynamic contractions against resistance at longer muscle lengths, there seems to be a more hypertrophic effect. For example, we would likely see greater muscle growth of the gastrocnemius performing a standing calf raise versus a seated calf raise. This provides another potential reason in support of larger range of motion training. If we lift with a greater range of motion, we are training the muscle at a longer length in the stretched position, which is probably inducing more hypertrophy. Another indirect reason in favour of full range of motion training is the positive effect on health and longevity. We generally see greater hypertrophy outcomes with larger range of motion, even when lighter loads are used. This means that we can train with lighter loads and get the same or probably even better muscle growth. This is overall less stress on the joints and will keep trainees healthier over time. Because significant muscle growth takes years to achieve, we need training to be a healthy and sustainable process to maximize our potential. Therefore, it is probably in our best interest to use full range of motion and therefore slightly lighter loads if our goal is to maximize muscle growth. So what influence does all of this have on exercise selection? Well, going back to what we mentioned earlier, Different exercises take muscles through different ranges of motion. Therefore, trainees should generally preference exercises which take the muscle through a larger range of motion than those that take the muscle through a shorter range. For example, full depth high bar squats will take the quads through a larger range than low bar box squats. So we know that we should preference exercises which take the muscle through a larger range of motion. However, is there ever a time where more range of motion is worse? The answer is yes. Some trainees may find that some exercises which use specific ranges of motion seem to irritate certain joints and cause pain over time. This is highly individual for each trainee and may be influenced by predispositions. Factors such as training history, injury history, joint tolerance, perception of pain, and individual anatomy will all influence which exercises feel more or less comfortable on a trainee's joints. However, we need to rule out that this exercise is causing you discomfort and not some other factor. Therefore, it is important to check a few things before ruling an exercise out. First is load used. If the trainee is using a load that they can't handle with good technique, then this may be causing them issues, not necessarily the exercise itself. Second is technique. Even if the load used is appropriate, trainees may still be using a technique that is causing excessive stress on a particular joint. And third is rep ranges. 
Some exercises generally feel better with higher rep ranges, while others feel better with lower rep ranges. We want to ensure the rep ranges we use are appropriate for the exercise to avoid excessive stress on a particular joint. For example, if we perform bicep curls for sets of 4-6 to six reps, we will probably develop some joint pain over time, because the load required will place high stress on a single joint. So before concluding that full range of motion on bicep curls is going to cause you joint pain, first try to increase the rep ranges to around 10 to 20 reps, and therefore also have to drop the load. So what can we practically conclude from all of this information? Essentially, we want to preference exercises which take the muscle through a larger range of motion over others. With other factors being equal, training a muscle through a greater range of motion will likely result in greater muscle growth and keep trainees healthier over time. However, some trainees may find certain exercises or ranges of motion irritating or uncomfortable on their joints. This may be due to a number of individual predispositions that can't really be changed. In this case, trainees may want to select exercises which avoid certain ranges of motion to reduce local joint stress. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.